that's where I've been having. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 195, 3D Modeling for Animation for the Spring Semester 2022. Today, I'm going to give you some tips on how I would approach building the table and lamp. Um, and <clears throat> if there are other workflows that work for you, that you explore, be my guest. This is just the process that I've worked on over the years, and it's, it's an approach that works for me most of the time. Um, there's a project that I'm working on now that I'm having trouble with. So um, it happens. You know, every project presents its own uh, particular approaches. Um, some are better than others, and that's something that you're going to have to discover through trial and error. So first things first, we're going to make a, a table and lamp today. And then maybe on Wednesday, we'll send it over to layout and I'll show you how I would complete it. Okay. So <clears throat> um, first things first, I like working in quad view. The next thing is that I like having the numeric requester up. Okay. Um, another one that you may want up from time to time are this, is this statistics panel. Now, this will give you polygon statistics. And if you click on points, it gives you point statistics. So since I mostly will be working with polygons, I can do that. For right now, I probably don't need it. But that would be another panel that you would want open from time to time. So table and lamp. I'm going to make a table that's probably about the size of a card table. So maybe that's <clears throat> one meter by one meter. And I'm going to exaggerate the thickness and make it maybe an inch to two inches thick. That's pretty thick for a table. OK, so I'm going to start with a tabletop. And to do that, I'm going to use under um, create, we'll use the box tool because that most closely fits what, um, <clears throat> what I want. Now, I can use the, the um, numeric requester to get me in the ballpark here. So let's reset. Okay. And let's go ahead and activate. In the default settings, since I reset, are basically, if I have this set in, looks like I have it set in feet. So <clears throat> one meter is basically um, three feet, 3.370 inches, if you didn't know. Um, what I can do is let's go to display. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's go back again. And I'm going to reset. I'm just going to cancel that out. And um, I don't want to stop sharing. Um, let's see. I'm going to go back again. And I'm going to hit D for display. Let's turn off the box. Because I'm going to switch to meters. Just my, for demonstration purposes, it might be easier. So if we go to units, instead of default units or feet, I will make them. <clears throat> um, I don't want feet. What am I doing here? I need to go to metric. And we'll do it in meters. OK. Unit grid can be one meter. And start with that. And we'll go back over. And now when I click in here, you can see that we have, <clears throat> when I make an object, the meter size, should or the grid size should be one meter. So let's start again <clears throat> with um, the box tool. And I'll bring up the numeric requester. And I have my default <clears throat> box. I want the, um, the tabletop to be about one meter. So I'm going to leave the width and the depth one meter, but I want the height of it to be only two inches. So I'm going to make two. And then if, <clears throat> even though I'm working in meters, if I hit shift, and double quotes, it will convert it to meters. You can go back and forth that way. And you can see that it puts it in the middle of our universe here, and as if it were laying on the floor. So what I can do, though, is I know that the height of most tables is about 30 inches. So 
where I can place the center of this along the y-axis, um, since <clears throat> that's what I'm interested in right now is moving it up. It's right now it's on the floor, moving it up 30 inches. So I'll say 30 <clears throat> and double quotes and hit the tab key and it moves it up. So there I have it. Now I can go ahead and I can turn it off. I've made my tabletop. It's that simple. Um, let's look at it in um, over here. There we go. And perspective view. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things that I could have done. If I want to round the corners, I could have done that at the time. It would be better to do that now rather than later. The other thing is, before I do any more, I like setting up default surfaces for my objects. If they're all going to be the same surface, it's not an issue. <clears throat> but I like making them a little bit different. Okay, And if when I do have them different, set them up with just placeholder um, surfaces for right now. So I'm going to leave the tabletop as is. Um, if I to if I go to undo, and I select box again, <clears throat> and I activate, it will go back to the settings that I had that I just used. Now, what I can do here is I can add a radius. So watch, I'll zoom in. I said if we wanted to round the corners, this would be a good time to do that. So I'll click and I'll drag and I'll round the corners a little bit. Okay. Two meter, two millimeters, a little bit more, maybe. Okay, five, six millimeters. And then for the number of radial segments, I want um, a total of maybe six, just to smooth it out a little bit. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll turn it off. So there's my, <clears throat> my tabletop. And it has some nice rounded corners to catch light. Um, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to hit Q on my keyboard. And what that does is we'll, we're going to establish a surface for the tabletop. So I want this to be um, tabletop. That's the name of it. And I'll give it a default color for a surface. And it can be any color. I'll make it a nice blue, whatever. Is it going to be blue in the end? And we work on this on Wednesday? No, not a good chance. But if I wanted it to be blue, just painted surface, then that's all I have to do. So the next thing that I'm going to do is now I'm ready to go ahead and create the table legs. Um, you can think of this as sort of an IKEA project. We're building the pieces, you know, one by one. And um, when you get an IKEA table, the legs come separately and you screw them in. So what I'm going to do for the time being is that I'm going to make them a separate, the legs a separate, um, uh, a, a sep on a separate layer. Okay, just, and then, so if I click there for the foreground and I click here for the background, I can see where my tabletop is, but it's in the background. So now what I want to do is I want to create the table legs. I can, and you want to make sure that they are all identical to one another. So this, in this time, I'm going to select the disk tool. And I'm going to click, because um, it will be just basically a tube. If you wanted rounded um, table legs or, or rectangular table legs or whatever, you, you're free to do that. So, um, that looks like a good radius for that. I'm going to make sure, though, in the numerical questor, this is important that the radius for the X and the Z are identical to one another, and they're not. So I'm going to make them four point, let's see, I have 4.87. I'll just make it 4.75 centimeters, 4.75. And then I'm going to make this 4.75, 4 point, oops. seven five centimeters and make sure that it is in centimeters because remember the default is in meters and it will do that 
So now I have a perfect circle, a perfect cylinder, and now I can go ahead and I can zoom out a little bit and I can use my widget and I can just click and drag and pull that all the way down. And I didn't want to do that. So let's do that again. Let's go back, action, reset, or I'll go ahead and activate. And it went back. So that screwed things up. I'll pull this down. I accidentally dragged on something that I didn't want. So now I have to go back to the radius. Remember I said it was 4.75 centimeters, 4.75 centimeters. And we'll make this the next one. Um, yeah, 4.7, there we go. So now they're the same. Um, it's a little bit chunky, I think. So I'll go ahead and reduce it down to maybe four centimeters and four. There we go, that looks right, right. Now I wanna make sure that all the other table legs are identical. So to do that very quickly, before I fix this in space, I can zoom in a little bit like so. And with my right mouse, I can click and drag, whoops. Oh, shoot. Well, let me undo, man Z. Let's go back again. And I'm gonna go ahead and activate. And I screwed up, I know why I did it. Oh boy, something so simple. I'm telling you how to do something so simple and I'm screwing things up here. So let's go ahead here. Let's make my cylinder again, once again, because I did not fix it. I didn't turn off the tool. That's why it did that. So I'm gonna go back again under radius, four centimeters, and go to the bottom, four centimeters. <clears throat> And now what I wanna do is I wanna zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna pull this down to the floor. And there you go. If you get it, click right on that little widget. Um, you're in good shape. So now what I wanna do is zoom in and I want to move over the object, the center of it and right click and drag. And now it's working. I'm making an exact copy of it. And because I want it to slide along um, the, the, um, the Y plane, that's the top view is the view to use. Now I'm gonna go ahead and right click again and drag going over the center of this, right click and drag and make a, a second copy, the third leg move it into position. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click again over the center of it and drag and make a copy of the leg and put it in the position. And I'm using the grid to do that. Okay, and it needs to be nudged just a little bit. Make sure that they're in alignment with one another. Let me zoom in. Anytime I can't see that well, it helps to zoom in a little bit and see how I'm off. Well, see, I'm just making one mistake after another. Um, but not to worry, I right clicking instead of left clicking. So I'm going to go ahead and Click, and that gets rid of that. Now you'll notice I have a couple of them here as well. So if I click from the outside, if this happens to you, what I would do is I would, um, let's see where this, which table leg this is. If I click here, I'm gonna make sure that I have polygons selected and I don't want the disk tool. 
And there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting the outside because um, I actually have a duplicate of that there. You don't want that. So what I can do is I can select and I can say select connected. And then I can go ahead and hit command X to delete. And now I have another one here. There we go. So now I have the, net, the requisite um, <clears throat> number of pieces. Now I have an extra point here that I don't understand. Let me zoom in on that. So all the while, while I'm making these mistakes, you see, I don't know why that is there. I'll go ahead and I'll get rid of that. I had an extra point. So make sure that you don't have any extraneous points, any extraneous polygons um, before you move forward. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to assign a surface to the table legs. Okay. So since they are on their own layer and they're in the foreground, all I have to do is hit Q because if nothing is selected, then everything is selected. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make them um, create a, a new surface and we'll call it table legs. And we'll make it orange, something like that. Orange is fine, just for contrast. And they all change at once. Now, I, I'm ready to put the table together. So this is our IKEA table. So all I have to do is hit Command X and then go back to the first layer and hit Command V or Control V if you're on the PC. And it remembers the size, the placement, and we're done. We can go ahead and we can save this as a table. So I'll go ahead and I'll say select save, save as, save object as. Now, if you've been watching my videos, I need to go to my desktop here. And I'm going to go to um, not documents, my desktop. And I want to go to for, for me anyway, I want to go to Art 195, and that'll be the spring 2001 semester. Okay, now I've got a syllabus in there, but nothing else. Well, what you will need for you, if you're working in LightWave, is a content folder. So I'm going to right click in here. Let's go ahead and create a new folder. And I'll name it content. Then what I'm going to do inside the content folder is create three more folders. So I'm going to go ahead and make another folder. One will be for objects, one will be for images, and one will be for scenes. So objects, new folder. I don't want it in there. I want to make sure it's not in the object folder but it's back in the content folder. So that would have been a mistake. There we go. So now I can create a new folder here. And I'll make this one images. And I don't want it to be in the image folder. I want it to be in the content folder. Right click, uh, right click isn't working. New folder. Now I'll make this scenes. Lightwave is very specific about organizing your, your things in these separate folders. So I'll go back to content and I go into objects because this is what this is and I will save it. And I'll give it a name. I'll just name it table. Okay. Now, if I, the reason I, I use placeholders for the, the table is that if I bring up my surface editor over here, and there are two surface editors, there's one here in Modeler, and there's also one in Layout. <clears throat> the Layout is the one that I use by far more because there are limits to what you can see in Modeler. So Layout is the way to go. And you can see that I have a default surface, which is just white or grayish color. 
I have the table legs and I have the table top. Now I can change the color for these, for these if I wish at any time by selecting them from here. Once you have created the surfaces, you wanna select the surface from here and change it. So if I wanna go back in from the table top and change it from this blue to maybe a darker blue, I can do that. And there you go, okay? Now, if I decided to hit Q again, this is why I did it, um, created these objects on separate layers initially, is that if one of the reasons is that if I hit Q and I wanna assign a surface, come on. There we go. Let's say I want um, everything to be, um, and I better hold on. I'm going to save the table first. Command S to save. And now I'm going to, going to go ahead and hit Q. Actually, um, I don't want to reassign the surfaces. But what if I want to now move the table top or the table legs, a table leg? Well, if I select T for move now, and um, let's see, I go along the top here, and I move it, the whole table moves. Because remember, if nothing is selected, then everything is selected. So what I'm going to have to do, and it's a little bit more work, is turn off move. Let's say I want to move the table top or resize the table top. Select a polygon. So right now points are selected. Let's switch to polygons, select a polygon. And now because they're both on the same layer, I need to go ahead and say select connected. And now I can go ahead and I can move it or I can resize it. So if I want this larger, if I want a little bit smaller, um, I could go to my modify tab and I could go ahead and I could resize this. Okay, and from center of selection, now if I want to make it a little bit smaller or I want to make it a little bit bigger, I can do so. Okay, so that's being able to manipulate. And if I went ahead and I changed the surfaces, the same would be true. If I decided I was going to change the color of the tabletop again, let's turn off move. Let's move in the lower, my mouse on the lower left hand corner and deselect. There we go. Um, let's say again, I wanted the tabletop to be a different color. So again, if I hit Q and they're on the same layer and I came up here and I selected tabletop, up, oh, see it makes the legs tabletop color as well. So instead, what you have to do, because they're all on the same layer, is I have to go back and I have to select with a, just click and drag a few polygons for each of the table legs. And I'm doing that in um, perspective view. Now I can go ahead and go to select, say select connected. Now I can go back and hit Q. And since those are the so selected objects, I can go back now and I can select table legs. And I'm back to where I want to be. And then when I'm done, go back in the lower left-hand corner and click <clears throat> to deselect. So um, I've created my table, my table. Now I'm ready to build the table lamp. So but again, I'm like I did with the, the table. I started with the table top. I'm going to start with the lamp base. And we're not going to build the interior of the base. We're only going to build um, the base of the, uh, the interior of the lamp has the lamp bulb and it has the um, elements that it takes to hold the lamp shade in place and that sort of thing. We're not going to see it close up, so we don't need to do that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to start by building using this for reference, this table for reference to know how big my lamp needs to be because this is a one meter by one meter by 30 inch off the high table is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this to determine what size and placement I need for my lamp. So let's go back to create. 
And this time, I think I'm going to use the ball tool. And again, I'm working from the top view here. Because I want, when you're working with um, spheres, they tend to be, they have an orientation. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll move this up from the front or the back or the right view, get it into position, and that looks like a pretty good size for a lamp base. Okay, kind of a torpedo, a retro look. But if I were to leave it as is, it would just fall over, wouldn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the ball, and it's fixed. So now there are other ways that we can, in fact, edit this. What I want to do is, let's say from either the right or the back view, I want to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to hit T for move. I want to move this over just a little bit. Come on. There we go. Just using my grid here to make sure that things are lined up. So what I'm going to do from either the, the back or the, the right view is that I'm going to right click, okay, and wireframe. It will select it will select not only the polygons in the front but the polygons behind it. So if I right click and I drag around these polygons, notice that it selects all these polygons down here. Now I can go ahead and I can cut it. Command X or Control X on the PC. If I look at it from the bottom view, you'll notice that I've actually made a hole. Okay. Well, I want to cover that hole up. I want the base of my lamp to be solid, not hollow. So I'm going to switch to points and I'm going to right click and drag around the points, and I'm going to hit P for poly. And that turned it into a polygon. You can see that it is filled now. Now what I want to do is I can either select the polygon or I can select the points, right click and drag. And I need to expand them. I need them that just that row of points to be larger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to modify. And I'm going to select size or shift H, if you can remember that. And then make sure that my selection is from the center or uh, the, my selection um, action center is from the center of the selection. And now I can click and drag. And this allows me to make a nice size base for my, my lamp. This is one way of doing it. There are other ways of doing it, but this I wanted to show you that you can manipulate individual polygons and individual points, starting with a very basic um, uh, primitive shape. Now I need to let it sit on the table. So I'll hit T for move and hold down the control key and move it down into place. Now it's on the tabletop. There we go. Okay, turn that off. Um, Deselect. Now, but the one of the, the problems that I see with this <clears throat> is that um, I want this to look like it's made of ceramic. And it, if it were made of ceramic, it wouldn't have, you wouldn't see these facets and you wouldn't see this sharp edge at the bottom it would probably be slightly curved. So what I can do are a couple of things. Let's first by uh, set, set up um, a surface for this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Q because it's on a separate layer. It will be its own. So I'll name this lamp base. And let's click for a new color set. And I'm going to make it purple, okay? Just for the heck of it for the time being. And at the same time, I can go ahead and either select smoothing here or because I can still see the facets. If I bring up the surface editor, 
we can see now that I have a lamp base and smoothing can be turned on from here. And notice that it looks nice and smooth now, more like what I would see in a ceramic. But I still have that edge at the bottom. <clears throat> so now I can work with something that's a bit more organic. So to do that, I'm going to hit the tab key. Come on. Not working here. Why aren't you working? There we go. Now I get an error message because the bottom polygon is an N gon. It exceeds the number of points allowed for sub patches or subsurfaces. But I know it's not going to become a problem in this case. If you if it is a problem, there are various ways of fixing it. But I know from experience that this won't be a problem. And you can see that it's nice and rounded now. So I finished my lamp base. And now what I want to do is I want to build the lamp shade. I don't need the table anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the table, make sure that I've selected that layer, cut it, go back to my lamp base, and I'm going to save this as lamp. So save, save object as, and save it back where we saved our other table um, objects. So this one is going to be a um, lamp. And we'll have a separate object. So I find it, I mean, you could have them on separate layers and be one object, but what in the future, if you wanted to have to bring in only lamps, you created the table and the lamp, but maybe you only need a series of lamps for your scene. Well, you would have to go back to your table and lamp and copy and paste. And now I can just shop for them, so to speak, as separate um, objects. The next thing that I want to do now, now that I've saved my lamp and I have a size for it, <clears throat> is I'm ready to create the, um, the lamp shade. There are a couple of ways that we can do this. I'm going to start with the easiest way of doing that. I'm going to um, hit A to make sure that it, everything fits okay, into the screen. And then from my top view, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use, again, a cylinder for my lampshade. So uh, I'll go back to create, and I'm going to select the disk tool for that. And from the top view, um, I really need to go to a separate layer and then go back and make this in the background. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag, similar to what I did with a table top and legs. So I need to make sure that this stretches out a little bit, and then I move this into place so it's you know centered over my lamp base. And then what I want to do is over in the numeric requester, again, make sure that the radiuses are the same. So I'll make this um, I'll make it 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters. <clears throat> and I'll make. Z 30 centimeters as well, 30. And I can always resize this. There we go. And now I'm ready to pull this up into a lamp shade. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. So if I want my lamp shade to be a simple radius, I can leave it as such. If I want it to be a cylinder, I can do that. Let's move this up a little bit. So all I'm doing this all the while, it's in the works. The other thing that I can do is if I want it to be, instead of 24 sides, maybe I just want it to be like an octagon or something. Okay, I want it to be an octagon sided or uh, maybe I want it to be a four-sided um, or three-sided kind of pointed pyramid-like shape. Well, I want mine to be cylindrical. So I'm going to go back to the 24 sides. But it's important to kind of play with these a little bit. So I'm done with this. And I'll go ahead and I'll 
turn off the disk, hit A to fit all again. And now what I wanna do, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and hit um, T to move. I wanna move this over just a little bit. I probably should turn off grid snap. There we go. Turn off T for move. And now um, a couple of things. You'll notice that I have tops and bottom caps. Well, for a lampshade, you don't need them. But before I do, I want my lampshade to be tapered. <clears throat> so the easiest way to do that, <clears throat> I can either use the taper tool, which is something that's available to you that's under modify. And I can select taper. So that's taper and I want it to taper constrained. Remember I said the other day that there are a lot of tools have variations of one another like size and stretch or variations of one another will the same for taper and taper constrained. The next thing that we have here is we have different fall offs available to us. Now, if I go from the top view, watch if I go from the let's try from the right view. That's not how or the back view. I don't want it tapered like that. So you want it to be perpendicular to the direction that is tapering. And same if I go over here, notice how it's tapering in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna go over the top view and click and drag and notice that it's tapering. This is how I want my lampshade to look. Okay. So that's the easiest way of doing that. Another way, of, or one of the easy ways, another way of doing that would be to select the top polygon. So let's turn off taper constrained. That doesn't have a keystroke equivalent, but let's go ahead and select the top polygon. Uh, I gotta make sure that polygon selected, not points. There we go. So our top polygon is selected and now I can resize. So under modify, if I go to size and I make sure that it's from the center of the selection is the action, I can click and drag and I can use that as well. So there we go. We have our lampshade. But as I said, I need to now turn off size. I need to get rid of <clears throat> the top polygon and the bottom polygon. So I'll hold down the shift key. I'll select both top and bottom and then hit command X or control X to cut. Now we have a problem here because by default polygons are only one sided. It knows initially when you're making the cylinder that you're only going to see the outside. So it doesn't create a double sided. What I can do are two different things. It depends if this is going to be a close up shot, I can add thickness to this which isn't a bad idea. But what I can also do for our purposes right now is to show you that if I, as soon as I assign a surface to this, let's make this lamp shade. And I'm just gonna make this a light kind of cream color in here. Uh, that's as good as any right there. Okay, I'll sign it. So it's still not smooth, still can't see the back side of it. But if I bring up the surface editor, what I can do with lamp shade selected is I can select smoothing, make it nice and smooth, and I can select double sided. Now, if this were a close up shot and you want it to look more realistic, then I probably wouldn't have it double sided. But what I would do under multiply is I would add thickness. So I can come over here and we can thicken this. And I can come back in here and let's move this inward a little bit. There we go. See that? And it adds a little bit of realism, a little bit of thickness to it um, because lampshades do have some thickness. 
we can go ahead and turn off thicken and it automatically gives us our ins interior. And that's not a bad way to go. So um, later on, some of the other properties that we will begin working with are making sure that our lampshade can cat is um, translucent, has a little bit of transparency. We'll probably turn the lamp base into something that looks more ceramic and maybe add what are called bump maps to it. And right now we're set to go. If this were gonna be a close up or a product piece, so this is something, for example, Brenda, that you might consider doing that if you're gonna create a lamp from scratch, that you wanna, would wanna create all the interior pieces as well. So you'd have a lamp shade and a lamp base, but then you have to go in and take a look at what, you know, get some photographs off the internet of what, like how lamps are constructed to hold the lamp shade in place. And then you need to make a light bulb inside and stuff. And it could be a really nice piece if it were done um, to, you know, really look at the details very carefully. Okay. So what I want to do now is I did with the, the lamp or the, the table is I want to put the lamp shade now that I've completed it on the same layer is the lamp base. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut, that's control or command X. Whoops, didn't wanna do that. Um, let's go back again. Oh, I accidentally quit it. I hit command Z instead of command X. Oh, no, I didn't. It just crashed on me. So let's reopen it. That's not good. And then in a few minutes, we'll call it a day. So let me go back and see if I can't reopen it since I had been saving it, but I don't know when the last time was. I'll go ahead and load. Let's see if we can find a recent object. Let's go ahead and load object. That happens. Um, things crash. Uh, got the wrong root folder for this. So let's go back to desktop. Let's go to art 195. Um, spring 22, let's go into the content folder, let's select objects, and let's select the lamp, and open it back up, and see where I am at with it. See, the last time I saved, I just had the um, base and not anything else. So let me quickly make the shade again. Um, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, I'm going to copy the lamp shade, put it on the same layer as the lamp base. And then that will be it. We'll make sure that it's, I save it. I'm going to put the lamp base in the background for positioning. And let's select disk. And it should go back to my last settings. So I'm going to go back to activate and make sure that it's in the Y axis. And that looks a little bit too big. We can go ahead and zoom out. If I hold down the control key, I can make this a little bit smaller, like so. And then I can go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And then I can hold down the control key and I can move this up. So I want to make it a little bit bigger. Control, and that will increase the size of it just a little bit. OK, I'll go ahead and I'll fix it. I'll go ahead and um, taper the top just by selecting the polygon. and resizing it. So let's go to modify. And I want to size 
make sure it's from the center of selection. And I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and um, make the base a little bit bigger, or maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller. Um, let's go ahead. It'd be nice if I had say, huh? Let's deselect. Let's select the bottom and I'll make it a little bit bigger. Select signs. That looks better. Let's go ahead and kill the polygon. Let's go ahead and go to the top and kill the polygon. I'm going to go ahead and add thickness under the multiply tab. I'm going to go ahead and save in case this crashes. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit Q. And since I should already have lamp shade, I can select from that. No, I didn't save that. So I need to create a new one. Click down here. Select this color. You can make the lamp shade whatever color you want. And now what I need to do is go to the surface editor with the lamp shade and I need to turn on just smoothing, that's all. Close it. Save the whole kit and caboodle to make sure that the lamp shade is saved. Come on, there we go. Command X to cut. Go back to the lamp base layer. Command V to paste. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit Command S or Control S to save again. And my lamp is done. So now I've created both the table today, <clears throat> showing you ways of how to make mistakes and how to, you know, to correct them if you do. Make sure that you don't by accident have duplicates. Um, make sure that. Um, you use different, um, different objects for size relationships and space relationships and that sort of thing. <clears throat> and then we'll be um, set to go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on Wednesday is show you how to take this over to layout and then um, modify and refine the settings and add lights and um, maybe add a, 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 a floor to it and that sort of thing and put it all together into a finished scene. Okay, any questions before we leave today? No? Yeah, Patrick, uh, let me go ahead and allow you to talk. Yeah, Patrick. Uh, hi, Professor. Just wanted to ask if we're, we're, do we put the finish assignments and the assignments folder in our names? Yes. Okay, thank you. Just the final rendering. Don't put the, the OBJ file or the scene file in there. I guess if you want to, you can, but I'm more interested in just seeing the final rendering. Okay, thank you, Professor. Okay. Emilio? No? Okay. Did you have your hand up, Emilio? No? That's it for today then? Okay. Hopefully this little assignment will help you to get acclimated to LightWave using primitives, using editing tools in various ways to build, starting with your basic forms and build um, 
basic shapes. No, I can't hear you, Emilio. So hold on one second here. Go ahead, unmute yourself, Emilio. Uh, yeah, I just want to ask if we put the those Blender folder, those Blender final render in the canvas as well or no? No, you don't have to. Um, you can, but you don't have to. Okay, let me get sure. Okay. Just, you know, let me know that you've completed I don't know, I presume if you're working in Blender, have you completed the hammer assignment? Uh, yeah, I just wanna make sure yeah. if I also. So yeah, either way, you can put it in Canvas. Um, you can put it, um, I'll get notified, but uh, make sure that you just put the final rendering in, okay. in yeah. Canvas or in the, um, again, the Google, Google Drive. Drive. Okay. okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it for today, folks. I'm gonna say goodbye. We're done. Pause the recording.